Okay, in this session I want to uh, talk about how we can compare two data sets. So I've opened up in SPSS um, the ride1.sav data set that we've already looked at and explored a little bit. And I've also opened up um, the ride5.sav uh, data set. This is a data set, in fact, in the first um, screencast that I referred to as ride2.sav. It's actually ride5, that's the last ride um, in the uh, series of rides that I've uploaded. So there's several ways that we can compare this, uh, these data sets, but the way we're going to do it is by um, just combining them uh, together in, into one file. So let's take this here, this is ride5. SAV. And all I want to do is I want to copy the whole data set. So uh, I select the first um, row. And I'll scroll down to the end of the data set. Again. And then holding down shift and that one there see it, it by pressing the bottom right hand corner of the data set it's now selected all of that data so then I'm going to edit copy and I'm going to go back to the ride one data set so scroll down to the bottom find it. Select uh, the first empty row, edit, paste, and our data set appears. And we can see that because under the ride number variable, uh, the ride number goes down, saying 1 for the first set ride 1 and then where we've pasted the second set it then starts at ride 5 and that's how SPSS knows uh, which of this velocity and time data goes with which um, which ride and now uh, th so let's do the the simple uh, comparing the histograms to start with so let's go to graphs to the chart builder and now we're going to choose a histogram, but this time instead of choosing this one that we chose, a single histogram, we're going to look at the stacked histogram. And this allows us to look at two sets of data. We drag that in there. Now we can, um, as before, just drag velocity down onto the x axis got the histogram up, uh, that's just the count on the vertical axis, axis and then the grouping variable, the ride, we're going to put over here so it knows um, how to how to group the data press OK and then we look at the output window and we should see that it has put together both of these data sets so we can see that ride number one is in blue and ride number five is in green and we can see it does look like there's um, some difference between these remember the research question that we set out to answer is have I become a faster cyclist over the over the summer over the period of doing these cycle rides? And we can see that there is possibly some shift uh, between the modes. So the mode here is slightly higher than the mode in the ride one data set. And again, we're getting some outliers um, here. Apparently. Uh, I, I got up to close to 80 miles per hour on the bike, which um, again I suggest is down to GPS positioning errors 
uh, rather than actually um, me going that fast. But also we see these zeros coming up here, which again we thought were probably due to stopping at junctions and stop stopping at traffic lights. And um, we can see, uh, we look here, we can see the difference in the means. So the mean for ride number one, so let's say number one, mean has 17 miles an hour. Uh, mean and in ride five, the mean is 19 miles per hour. So there is a difference. Uh, but whether whether that's a real difference or not uh, still remains to, to be seen. Now, as we discussed again previously, we could apply some filters to what we think are actually reasonable speeds um, to be comparing. So let's go back to the data set, the combined data set now. In fact, we'll just quickly save that as combined. Save as. And let's uh, go back and do as we did before, we're going to apply a filter to just select certain cases. And if you remember, we chose velocity if a certain condition is satisfied. So now we're going to set up that condition. The condition is if the velocity is greater than 10 miles per hour and the velocity is less than 30 miles per hour. Try and apply that. Now you can see, in fact, it's quite interesting to look here. So you can see the ones and zeros. One in this filter column means that it's included in the data set, but also SPSS helpfully puts a line through um, any of these data sets that it's going to be excluding from further analysis. So now let's just look quickly at the data set again. Now, all of this is the same because we're, we're not changing the graph that we want to do. And SPSS will automatically exclude um, the data that we've asked it to exclude. And now, actually, we can see an expanded view of those um, histograms. And we're beginning to see that really there is some shift. Uh, or some visual shift in these in the, these data sets. So now, what it might be useful to do is actually do a statistical test to see if there is a difference. Now, having excluded some of these outliers and made the data sets less skewed, we'll apply a, a, a t-test. Now going back to the data file, ride one and five at SAV, which is sticking in the data view. Now go to the analyze menu and say we want to compare the means of these data sets. And if we go in here, we can use a t-test to compare means. It's one of the tests available for comparing means. So in this case, we're going to choose independent samples t-test. And the test variable, the thing we're testing to see if it's changed, um, is the mean of the velocity, or the mean, mean velocity, as you say. That goes in there. And that grouping variable is the ride, because we're grouping by either ride one or two. Now, when you select that, you have to define the groups. That's simply these numbers here. So where we've got ride one, we can say group one is ride one. So put a one in there. And group two is ride five. So a grouping variable there 
to the forest. Continue. No, let's just press OK. And this PSS does a t test for us. It puts out all of these values. Um, and what we're really interested in is to know if there is a statistically significant difference. And so here it spits out what it calls significance. And the significance here is essentially zero. Um, uh, what's this saying? This is the p-value. This is the probability that this difference, the, the difference observed in the means, could have been obtained by randomly sampled uh, sampling a single distribution of data. So, actually, if you just did two sets of measurements on uh, on one data set could you have randomly produced this difference? And the probability that this difference would have occurred by chance is essentially zero. So it's a very small chance of that happening. And that means that we have uh, observed a statistically significant difference in the mean. 